back again with Judy and Erin. And we're talking about long-term care insurance for those of you that have just joined us. Um, you mentioned part of an estate plan. And this is another discussion of what you guys can come back. I mean, we can do volumes of information. Mm -hmm. There's just so much out there. Why should long-term care insurance, Judy, be a part of a well-drafted, well-constructed estate plan? Well, I think you have to look at your budget. First thing you have to do is come up with a budget and see what you're going to have, what, how much money you think you're going to have for retirement, so you know if you're going to be able to afford long-term care or you know, going to have that money for your heirs or your spouse, or you want to put that in your plan and figure out, this is part of my, I'm going to have a will, I have to have my advanced directives, you know, and part of this, my retirement plan should be part of your long-term care insurance, I think. It's definitely important to look at it either way. I was talking to Erin earlier, and she was telling me that uh, she has some clients whose children are buying it for the parents, and I thought that was a great idea. I hadn't heard of that because that way they won't be faced with the burden, even if it's a small policy. Mm -hmm. At least they'll have something. They won't have to tap into their own, right? Well, you know, you're right, because my wife had a situation. Her mom needed some surgery, and my wife had to book off from her job and take FMLA and go there and actually be there with her, which, you know, they enjoyed being together. There was no issues with that, but when it starts to get to where you have your own responsibilities and things like that, it's like, holy cow, you know, a spouse that want you and kids that need you and the job and uh, yeah and sometimes you have to take that time off from work and not be paid yeah you know, so it's not paid leave so you have to look at all of that and plan for the future if you have parents that are you know in their 60s and 70s and think about what you want to do what you need to do yeah i think that's even an interesting statistic is that if you live to be age 65 you have a 67 percent chance yeah. of needing some form of long-term care so it goes back to estate planning and, and budgeting and what Judy just mentioned is that if you have parents that are in their 60s, the likelihood is they're going to need some form of long-term care. And so is that something that they can afford on their own or that they can insure? Is it something that you can afford or that you have the time to offer or that maybe you pay for the insurance for them? But the important thing to think about is if you or your relatives are in their 60s, even if they're in perfect health, statistically they're going to need some assistance, so it's a good time to have a discussion and to have a plan. And the plan may not be by long-term care, not everybody is healthy enough to do so, but if the plan is not by the insurance, it should be working with the attorney, the accountant, or someone like Judy to help with the budget and forecasting. What, so, what do we do in the event, yeah. Right, it, right. it should really be part of your plan. And, and I guess it really comes down to, like anything else, you know, uh, most people out there, and, and you know, I'll, I'll sit at uh, that chair during the day, and people will come and wail to me about the money they don't have. It amazes me that when the stock market has an issue, it gets very quiet around here, because everybody's starting to f look and say, what's going to happen with me? But uh, it's like, well, you have to buy one thing more. Ah! You know, I don't want to do that. Um, when should people look at long-term care? What part of their life cycle? Male, female, perhaps differently, perhaps similar? You know, I'm just going to interject on that. You know, I got divorced a little over 10 years ago, and that's the first thing I did was get long-term care insurance because mm -hmm. I thought, well, who's going to be around to take care of me? I don't want to put this burden on my children. I think this is the first thing I need to do. So ideally, we were talking about it, 50s is really the right time. A lot of people at 40 even, they might think it's too far away. They're not ready for that, but 50s, really? Absolutely 50s. I am seeing people look into it now in their 40s because they figure I can capitalize on my health and the fact that the products are less expensive now, so why put it off and wait? Uh, about a quarter of the people in their 60s who try to get insurance are declined. So it mm -hmm. is the type of product that's very dependent upon health, and oftentimes when you think about it and you realize you need it, it may be too late from a medical point. So doing it while you're young and healthy is ideal. And if you're in your 50s, it's a great time to think about it because the premiums will be lower, your health is probably still great, and you can now plan. And well, and, and you know, you and I were chatting before we started, and uh, I've had people, you know, again, sitting in that chair come and say, well, you know, how do I know this long-term care company is going to be around when I'm 80 and I'm 49 and, 
you know, there's so many things between now and then, and you know, all, all, all the, you know, well, they'll give you the parameters of life, like sure, if I could walk out and get hit by a bus, a boulder, depending on where they live. <laughs> Um, how does one know that the insurance will be there at the time of need? What safeguards are in place for that? Well, one safeguard is to work with someone who's knowledgeable about the insurance companies and their financial strengths. Mm -hmm. um, there are several competitive companies that are all rated A or better financially. So they're very strong household names, companies that have been in business for decades and whose names everyone would know. And I would say anyone could feel comfortable using one of those companies. And the long-term care product has been around for over 25 years. So we've seen, even though companies have gone bankrupt, merged, mm -hmm. had to change prices, price their product far too low, we still have seen, even through this bumpy history, which has now evened out, but in the past, those claims are still getting paid today. So the insurance industry is very robust in this country. We have state superintendents that examine each company and each product and that ensure that these companies, one way or another, will be able to fulfill their promises. Now you mentioned the pricing. Is there a price guarantee with long-term care or can the premiums fluctuate depending and depending? That's actually a great question. And for everyone that buys long-term care should understand that the premiums are not guaranteed. Mm -hmm. They most likely will increase over the insured's lifetime. And I tell clients to plan for that so that if it doesn't go up, you'll be pleasantly surprised. And the rule is that the state superintendent can grant permission to an insurance company to increase the premiums for an entire class of product. And so you may buy a product now and 10 years from now find out that the premium is going up 10% or 20%. We are seeing less increases now than we were on older policies because the insurance companies finally have enough data to price their products more appropriately. But that doesn't mean that we've eliminated rate increases, and absolutely clients need to work with someone on both their budget and on the product side to find a product that's very comfortable that, for them to afford financially. I tell clients it has to be like a mortgage, it has to be a premium payment, that if you choose to buy this, you're gonna pay it every year. You meet, The goal is for you to be 95 and never have needed never it, have because needed you're in it. such great shape yeah. then. <laughs> But if you're still in great shape at 95, you're still paying that annual premium, which has likely increased a bit. So it has to be something that you give a lot of thought to and you've worked on your budget and you make sure it's something you can sustain, sustain throughout your retirement years. Now, in your professional practice, and I'll address this to, to, to both of you, what are some of the stories involving long-term care or lack thereof, good or bad, that uh, you'd like to share as perhaps object lessons to those who will watch us in the aftermarket and those that are watching here today? Well, a personal story that I have is I have a family member who was disabled in his 40s before he was able to get any of the proper types of insurance. Mm -hmm. And so for the rest of his life, it's always been a scramble of how do we plan for this, how do we save for this, because insurance is not an option. And so I keep that in mind when I have clients that say, I'll get it later, I'll wait a few years, I'm healthy now, what could possibly change? So nobody plans for their health to change. And that is what led me to buy my own long-term care policy in my 30s, because I thought, what if I am in an accident? What if I have cancer? And you know, having a small policy is better than, in my mind, being uninsurable down the road. Well, and you know, I can personally speak to that because I was the caregiver for my first wife for a year and a half. and. I, um, being quote unquote, you know, self-employed and being able to have good people that kept a watch over things, even though I was, you know, horribly divided between things I had to do at work and things I had to do at home and never feeling and having terrible guilt about not doing anything well, uh, I can certainly relate to that and, uh, you know, I, uh, and people going on for years and years and years and years, I mean, to me it was, unthinkable. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think another thing with policies is when there's, uh, you know, you have to have, the agencies have to meet certain criteria, the caregiving agencies. So I had one situation where they were, the agency said that they had their certificate and they were mm -hmm. recognized, so we started with them and in an actuality they really weren't. It turned out being denied, so we had to switch caregivers around, go to another agency, and it was very stressful for the uh, children of this couple. I have to go through all of that, you know, until they finally found the right agency. And it was 
stressful for the couple too because they had to go through a lot of different caregivers until they were able to find one that worked well. So you have to be careful when you start with that mm -hmm. that you make sure you go to the right caregiving agency. Well, yeah, and, and you know, the other thing is, uh, and um, I, I can personally assess to this, so can Mark, my producer, there was someone in our past who was um, very devoted to a particular caregiver, and the pricing was starting to get, mm -hmm. and, and there were other things that we could have done, but she would have none of it, and there's really no reason for her not, not to have any, she was entitled to at least that. But yet, it's the kind of thing where um, that's a very personal relationship with when and somebody will get used to someone, whereas, uh, oh yeah, we can't afford them, you know, here's Susie Q, and it's like you've, uh, you, you've gone 12 steps backward, but you're absolutely right. Yeah, it's very you know. emotional. It is a very strong emotional tie that sure. manifests there. It's a daughter-son relationship, mm -hmm. even though they're not related. I have several clients that bought their long-term care in their mid-40s and early 50s, and sometimes for fun I'll call them and say, here's what it would cost if you bought it now, and it's so much more expensive today. And so they say, I'm so glad I bought that when it was inexpensive, and I'm done, I don't have to think about it anymore, it's such peace of mind for me. So they're, I think for many people, just getting it over with and knowing it's done, I don't have to think about it anymore, I'm protected, I have this set, amount thing. of money set aside for myself, and, and I don't have to stress. Yeah, for so. certain. Well, we're coming up on a hard break. It's Tony, Erin, and Judy here talking about long-term care, and don't miss the finale coming back right after this on Connecticut Morning.